Hello folks, uh, this is Rodrigo Worley. I'm the new Extension Cropping Systems Weed Scientist with UW-Madison and uh, UW-Extension. And my objective here today is to provide you with a brief uh, summary on the dispersal and the spread of herbicide resistant weeds across the state uh, of Wisconsin. Earlier this year in January, uh, we conducted a survey uh, during the agronomy update meetings. And as part of my survey, I asked participants what were the most concerning uh, weeds that they were uh, dealing with in their operations. And the number one was water hemp, uh, followed by giant ragweed. So those are the two uh, most concerning weeds we're dealing with uh, in the state of Wisconsin, according to survey participants. Uh, in our survey, uh, we also asked participants whether they were dealing with glyphosate resistant weeds and the acres that they farm uh, or that they manage. And I want to acknowledge my postdoc, Max Oliveira, for uh, compiling all the data and generating these figures here. So what, we've, what we have here in this figure, uh, we divided uh, the answers in different categories. So you have the different professionals out there, if you would. So you have responses from agronomists, industry reps, co-ops, uh, and also the farmers. Okay. So according to agronomists, uh, co-ops, and industry and industry reps, there's a lot of concern, uh, and a lot of these folks are dealing with glyphosate-resistant water hemp out there, and also uh, glyphosate-resistant jagweed ragweed, uh, to some extent. The one thing that was uh, interesting about these results here, if you would, if you look at the farmers' data there, majority of the farmers believe uh, they are not uh, dealing with glyphosate-resistant weeds. So two scenarios here, one, they may not have the presence of glyphosate-resistant weeds in their operations, or uh, they, might be, uh, they might have it, but may not be aware of the problem. So I think it's important uh, that we get the word out there and then we make sure our farmers uh, are aware that we do have uh, glyphosate resistant weeds uh, in the state of Wisconsin and that might help them uh, you know proper identify the herbicide programs they're going to be using in the 2018 growing season and also moving uh, forward. So as I mentioned uh, water hemp is the most concerning weed uh, in the state as of now. Uh, I just want to provide you an update in the uh, occurrence of glyphosate resistance uh, across the various counties that we have. So in these figures here that I'm going to be showing to you, uh, the red counties are the counties where glyphosate resistant water hemp has been uh, confirmed. So as of 2015, uh, we had 12 Wisconsin counties uh, with confirmed glyphosate resistant water hemp uh, populations. In 2016, uh, we had 22 counties uh, with glyphosate resistant water hemp populations, and we also found uh, two counties uh, with PPO resistant populations. And then as of 2017, 25 counties confirmed uh, with glyphosate resistant populations, and also four counties confirmed with PPO resistant uh, populations, and those counties were Iowa, Monroe, Pierce, and St. Croix. And this is a uh, typical trend that we, you know, we see uh, and we've seen uh, in other states. Uh, you get glyphosate resistance, uh, it starts spreading around as we were seeing here uh, in Wisconsin. Once farmers start getting uh, glyphosate resistant weeds, uh, the herbicide option for management, for post-emergence management of these weeds become your PPOs or your group 14. Okay? And as we start relying on group 14 for control of glyphosate resistant weeds, we then start selecting for PPO resistant weeds. And this is exactly uh, what we are seeing here, what we're seeing here uh, in the state. Another weed that's a concerning one for our farmers is giant ragweed. Uh, and this is some work uh, done by my colleague Dave, uh, Dr. Dave Stoltenberg here. Uh, and he's found the population is confirmed, a population that's ALS resistant uh, in Columbia County. And we also have a confirmed case of glyphosate resistance and giant ragweed in Rock County. And in communication with farmers, agronomists, and industry reps, uh, you know, they've been telling us that there are more counties uh, where resistant uh, giant ragweed populations are present. Last weed I'm going to talk about here today is Palmer Amaranth. Uh, Palmer Amaranth is a new weed to the state of Wisconsin, if you would. It was first detected in 2011 in Rock County, and since then it's been identified in six different counties uh, across the state. And in three counties, uh, these populations have actually been confirmed to be uh, resistant to herbicides. So you have Dane County 
and you have Sauk County uh, where Palmer amaranth populations were confirmed to be resistant to glyphosate and then in Iowa County uh, we have a population that was confirmed to be resistance, uh, resistant to HPPD and ALS uh, inhibitors so we have Palmer amaranth coming in uh, to the state uh, via contaminated seed or you know moving uh, with equipment uh, the seeds that are coming to Wisconsin and some of these uh, populations you know are already resistant to herbicides uh, I just want to put a plug uh, here I you know challenge our farmers and our agronomists to keep an eye uh, for this weed it's not widespread in the state and we want to keep it like that uh, once established it tends to be a very aggressive uh, weed species very competitive and difficult to control uh, so I urge you know our ag community in the state of Wisconsin to keep uh, our state palmer free as much uh, as we can so just to kind of wrap things up here uh, you know we uh, as I showed in this maps we have you know several instances of glyphosate resistant water hemp uh, we have glyphosate resistant giant ragweed confirmed in the state and also ALS resistant giant ragweed confirmed so there are resistant weeds out there uh, you know it's important that farmers uh, can identify their you know whether they have it or not and you know once they do that you know that will help them select uh, the herbicide programs as you know as they try to manage uh, this difficult uh, to control weeds so just some uh, you know strategies you may want to think about here uh, for this difficult to control weeds uh, we weed scientists recommend farmers to start clean uh, put a good pre-emergent herbicide out there uh, containing a couple effective modes of action uh, don't wait too long uh, to come with a post program when you come with a post program weeds are breaking through the residual herbicide there you know add an effective herbicide uh, post you know for post control uh, but if the canopy is not close you know if your crop is not close to closing canopy yet you may want to consider bringing additional residual uh, in season particularly in soybeans so you have products such as uh, the group 15 herbicides that could be tank mixed with your post program to bring some additional in season residual activity there uh, we also encourage farmers to think outside the jug as often as possible you know take some of that selection pressure away from herbicides you know managing herbicide resistant weeds with herbicides um, you know it's it's not going to be a sustainable strategy as we move down the road uh, with the limited tools that we have in the toolbox so we got to start thinking outside the jug there uh, if you would you know take advantage of your no chemical strategies your tillage practices you know uh, make your crop competitive uh, change the row spacing as possible go as narrow uh, as you can uh, interrow cultivation the adoption of cover crops all the strategies they're not solution for weed management however uh, they can certainly help you out some of the other things you know you drive around the state and then you see fields with excellent level of weed control but you watch the field edges the edges are full of uh, weeds in there and oftentimes you know troublesome weeds that we don't want to have in our operations uh, so again you know challenging farmers to make sure that the field edges you know uh, are kept weed free because that's going to minimize the influx of weed seeds uh, back to your field optimize weed control in rotational years for instance uh, there are a lot of herbicide options uh, they're very effective on the pig weeds and the rag weeds in a corn year so take advantage of that okay uh, you know do the best that you can to control those weeds where there are options and that's going to help you all when you come back to a soybean year where your options are somehow limited you have a lower uh, seed bank pressure there minimize seed dispersal so if you have fields that have resistant weeds you know make sure you have you harvest those fields uh, last and when you're moving that equipment around your that you know harvesting equipment or the tillage equipment or planting equipment make sure you're cleaning that equipment so you're not spreading uh, the problem around because at the end of the day it's all about seed bank management because if you have no seed you're not going to have a weed there so we got to do the best that we can uh, to avoid you know having this uh, troublesome weeds producing seeds in our cropping systems so with that I want to thank you for your attention I have my contact information listed in here uh, if you would like to discuss uh, herbicide your herbicide program or if you have uh, weed science related questions uh, feel free to reach out to us here thank you very much